Our second scripture lesson today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Listen for the word of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, Let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the in the heaven above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoky mist the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the lord's great and glorious day then everyone who calls on the name of the lord shall be saved this is the word of our lord Thanks be to God. We finally made it. We really did. We, we have made it here, uh, and I am glad to announce we think all of our stuff is here, we think. <laughs> We're not quite sure yet. Uh, some of you may know this, some of you may not. The last truck that was loaded full of our stuff came yesterday. Um, so yesterday was an unload the truck day and start unpacking boxes day. Um, so, but we made it and we are still unpacking, but that's okay. Um, Michelle and my family and I have been praying for this day and many days to come for quite a while. Um, we are very excited about this day. Um, you have been praying for quite a while as well. 
Isn't it wonderful how we can turn to the Lord? Um, and the, the beginnings of those prayers are fairly general, right? Prepare someone for us and prepare us for them. Uh, but they become then more specific as God reveals to us what we need uh, to pray for as God reveals to us what's coming next. We have been praying, you and us. We have been cleaning. We have been packing. We have been cleaning again and unpacking. You have been planning, you've been cleaning, you've been organizing, you've been preparing cards, you've been preparing welcome baskets. Um, you have even uh, run out and brought things to us that we needed because we didn't know where it was, somewhere on a truck in a box. So I give thanks to God for this day and for each of you and for this congregation. I give thanks to God for uh, what God has done to prepare all of us because we are finally here in this place and we are together as the church. We are here as St. Andrew, the part of the body of Christ that God has called to do ministry here in this place. And I give thanks to God for that. God has taken good care of us along the way. Um, I know that God called a group of people uh, to serve on the PNC, the Preacher Nominating Committee, um, and a good group of people, a very faithful group of people who worked well together from what I saw. Uh, three years. Uh, if you have not served on a committee like that, that's a long time. That is a long commitment. And from what I have heard, everybody stuck to it. They did not have to do any kind of substitutions in that process. God sent such wonderful leaders to be on that PNC so that we could be together today. God has provided good leadership in this congregation as well, for I have heard that the session has followed what they believe uh, God is calling this church to do and to be um, in doing plans, continuing forward with the plans that God has started uh, for f quite a few years ago and seeing through what they feel God is calling us as a church to do and be. God provided Pastor Dave. So I heard Pastor Dave came here to be, was it a co-pastor or associate at the time? Associate. associate. And lo and behold, he gets to be solo pastor for three years. He didn't sign up for that. Isn't it amazing and wonderful what God gives us opportunities to do? Um, I give thanks to God for the leadership that God has brought here in, in Pastor Dave. Um, God has, speaking for myself, God has done a lot for me as well. God has, um, well, opened doors for Michelle and I that we couldn't see coming. Um, and for the most part, we feel like we have walked through those doors um, following God's lead. Uh, I have to wonder if there were a few we missed every once in a while, but we try to be faithful. I give thanks to God for nudging us along the way, keeping us together as a family. Um, two, two of my children and, and Michelle, my wife, are able to be here today. Uh, the third one will be here in July. You'll get to meet her. But God has brought us, kept us together along the way as a family. Um, not only that, God has prepared me for today and this place. Um, I'll share a little bit about myself in this. When I went to seminary, I did not plan to be a solo pastor. That was the last thing I could ever want, was to be the person, the head honcho, the one in charge where the buck stops. I didn't Amen. need it, didn't want it. <laughs> I was like, Lord, please, I know what I need to be doing. I need to be an associate pastor, working with youth, doing Christian ed, going to camps, going on mission trips, Bible studies, you know, uh, lock-ins. Just had a lock-in, didn't they? 
and Pastor Dave stuck it all the way to midnight. I didn't. Um, <laughs> I come from a church where I was the solo employee. That was not what I signed up for. Looking back over those 24 years, it's exactly where I needed to be. God was molding and shaping and moving in my life and getting me ready for today. So I give thanks to God for how God has moved in my heart and in my life and the gifts that God has given to me and bringing me here today. I want to give thanks to God for St. Andrew, this body. And I look forward to what God has in store for us. Today's scripture passage is so appropriate for today. It is an amazing, beautiful story. It is the story from the book of Acts where Luke shares with us what happened on that first Pentecost after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. Pentecost, the, the Israelites had been celebrating Pentecost for a while, but this was a special one. It was one recording. Um, it was one that the Holy Spirit inspired Luke to write down and record so that we may know this story. It is such a great story. A story of new beginnings. A story where God's presence moved across the hearts and the people and the community and started a new community. The birthday of what we call the church. It was that new community of believers, that new uh, fellowship of faith. It was taking the disciples and having them continue what Jesus already started in a new way. To continue what God had already been doing throughout history and generations, but in a new way. It was a new beginning and a new story. In this story that Luke has recorded for us, if you can imagine uh, people gathering from all around, from all the different places of the world, um, are y'all, anybody here watch the Marvel movies? Anybody? Oh, <laughs> oh man, you're missing. There we go. In my mind's eye, when I read and when I hear this story over and over, I think of uh, some of the Marvel movies because they always have these great gatherings of, of all these people from all over speaking different languages. They're coming from different countries, even countries that don't even exist. But it's this gathering of people from everywhere, from all walks of life and different places. And in the midst of that, all of a sudden, the pyrotechnics take off, the wind is blowing, the wind machines are just, just blowing people everywhere. And something amazing happens in that moment. The Spirit of the Lord moves. God's presence is there and active. And people start understanding things that they did not understand before. By the power of the Holy Spirit, their ears were opened, their eyes were opened, their hearts were open, And they understood something they had not understood before. Yes, this is one of those wonderful stories that um, we tell over and over uh, so that the little ones can know this story and how God moved so long ago. We tell this story over and over so that those who are young in their faith who may not have heard this story before can know how God had moved in the past so powerfully. But we also tell this story this time of year, Pentecost Sunday, so that those of us who've heard it over and over again, so that we can hear the mighty power of God and how God has worked in, in the past. And so our ears and our eyes and our hearts can hear 
and know what we need to know at this time and in this place that God reveals. You ever read a scripture passage that you've read over and over and over again, and all of a sudden something just stands out to you that you don't remember was there, and it just makes sense. It is the power of the Holy Spirit, God moving in our hearts, opening our lives to God's word. And we trust that God will do that. A few years ago, um, I went on a mission trip with a group of people that was made up of uh, members from the church where I was pastor um, and a group of people from the Methodist church down the road. We decided we were gonna go to Mexico on a mission trip and uh, we were gonna do it together and we were going to help build a church. And what they needed to build that church was the footer of the, of, uh, the building. Uh, if you have never helped put in the footer of a building, basically you, we had to dig a ditch wide enough for cinder, block, uh, cinder blocks to be put down in there. And I believe they wanted it four cinder blocks high. That's how deep and how wide all the way around the building that we were that was our job and while we were there we were to worship and to do bible study with people in mexico in order to get ready for this particular trip most of the people on this mission team knew each other from somewhere or another because it was a small farming community everybody knew pretty much everybody because they all grew up together um, but we wanted to do some group bonding and some building and, and get to know each other. So on the, in our preparation for this trip, on the first meeting with everybody in the room, we went around the room and said, uh, tell everybody your name, what church you go to, so we know exactly which one it is, and why are you going on this trip? So we started around the room, and as we went around the room, we heard all the, you know, hi, my name's Mark, I'm at, I'm at the, the Presbyterian Church. Um, and we heard all these different reasons, some of the normal reasons. One is, um, I like sharing my faith. Um, I love to travel. I've never been out of the country. <laughs> Sounds like fun. My mom and dad are going, and I can't stay home. <laughs> um, got to uh, one uh, friend of mine, and she said, I'm going on this mission. My, name, uh, uh, my name's Michelle, and I'm going on this mission trip because I'm addicted to mission work. That caught my ear, because I'd never heard it described that way. Um, she said, I'm addicted to mission work. When I fir my first mission trip was when I went to, was when I was in college. Um, there was an organization on campus that organizes mission trips, and we thought it'd be fun, a bunch of college students going. We did it, and when I came back, I immediately signed up for another one. And when I got back from that one, I signed up for another one. She kept going on these mission trips throughout her college career. And then when she graduated from college, she started working for that same organization so she could organize mission trips and she could go on these, continue going on these mission trips and get paid for it. She said she loved being with people in her faith, being with them in faith and sharing that faith and doing work that helps others, but being with them in our faith together, doing the work of God. And when she said that, when she used that word addicted to mission, I was like, I get that. That makes so much sense to me. It's such a wonderful way of describing it. You know, you can... Uh, it's nice to be understood at times, right? Everybody wants to be understood. And it's so cool when you get that connection with someone where they understand what you're saying or you're understanding what they say. And there's this common bond that brings you together. 
I believe that's the Holy Spirit, God between us, bringing together, opening our ears and our eyes, not only to God, but also to each other. God is the one who brings us together and creates and bonds us together as a community. But you know, experiences like that, some of you may have, may have heard me describe that mission trip and say, yeah, I get that. Some of you may be saying, that sounds nice, but uh, okay. It's so hard to describe mission trips, things like that, camp experiences, mountaintop experiences. It's so hard to describe and explain to someone what it's like to feel and know the presence of God, isn't it? You can tell them what you did. I can tell you about uh, the ditch that I dug and how wide it was and how deep it was. And I can tell you that uh, I was paired up with another fellow who was from the Methodist church. And we knew each other before we got there. But by the time we got our leg of that, that ditch dug, we really knew each other. Um, and we shared our faith with each other. And we strengthened each other. And we worked side by side in the name of the Lord. Now, I can describe that to you, but, but you know, really, how do you tell somebody what it's like to be in the presence of God? What's it like to know the Lord's presence? Sometimes it sounds like a rushing wind, like at Pentecost. Sometimes it's like fire burning upon us, around us, among us. I mean, don't you remember, don't you remember that story when the disciples were distraught and confused because they had just seen their Lord and Savior crucified, but then all of a sudden the tomb was empty, so some of them started walking to Emmaus, and lo and behold, Jesus joined them. Don't you remember after He disappeared from their presence what they said? They said, didn't our hearts burn when He opened the Scriptures to us? Yes, the Holy Spirit can be like fire in and among and around us. Sometimes it feels uh, like the warmth and security of knowing that God has created everything like the psalmist described in Psalm 104 this morning. To know that God set the seasons, and this is one of my favorites right now, in order and keeping them that way for a reason and a purpose. Not only that, to hear how the psalmist says that God plays with the wildest and the most horrifying beast we could ever imagine and plays with them like, like pets. Sometimes it feels and looks like making a joyful noise with the choir or just a friend and playing. Sometimes it, it, it feels like getting up in the morning and being able to say, thank you, Lord, for one more day. Yes, the presence of the Lord. Sometimes, sometimes it feels like sitting in a hospital waiting room, talking with friends, family who have gathered there and waiting, praying and waiting. Sometimes the presence of the Lord feels and tastes and looks like the cup of salvation. The cup of promise from God to us. Or the loaf, the body of Christ given for us. Sometimes that presence of God feels like forgiveness. Not just the giving, not just the receiving, but both. Knowing, knowing the forgiveness and the acceptance of who we are. 
sometimes it looks like living and being a part of a group of people who live by and base their life and are motivated by the promise of forgiveness and new life and new beginnings. That promise that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit, that promise which is for you, as Peter said, for your children and for all who are far away. But I can describe that. I can, you can probably come up with so many different ways that you have felt the presence of the Holy Spirit and the presence of God, can't you? We all can come up with a list and we can describe it to friends and neighbors and family members and hope and pray they connect and understand. But there's... It's not till you experience it, isn't it? Not till I went on that mission trip, the first one that I went on when I was in high school. It wasn't until uh, I sat in the waiting room uh, with someone for hours waiting for the doctor to come out until I understood. It was not till um, I sat with a friend to the very end that I knew what the presence of the Lord was like in that place. So, we tell the story. Every year about this time of year. We tell people and we invite them to share with us and to experience the presence of the Lord. We pray together. We study the Bible together. We break bread together. We gather around tables and we roast pigs. <laughs> Uh, and make barbecue. And we know the presence of the Lord as God reveals it to us. Yes, this story is so appropriate for us today. It is so appropriate for this time of year. It is so appropriate because we have a new beginning. A beginning that is based on the history of what God has done here at St. Andrew through you. We have a new beginning based on what God has done in my life and in my family. We have a new beginning that God is calling us to and prepared each of us for and this church for. So it's time to see what God has in store for us by trusting in the Holy Spirit and following. Thanks be to God.